cold now and he's walking walking through the snow heading down the river line trying to make it home and he's made it 40 miles 600 left to go it's a long old lonesome journey shuffling through the snow he's a lonesome man he's hungry it's been a time since the last he's ate and as the night grows colder he wonders of his for his legs are full of pain staggers through the night as he sees through his troubled eyes his hands are turning white could have been on that train, but Big Moses and me, we knew different. That night, the temperature fell to 40 below, so he couldn't have gone far. Anyway, when you've spent half your life on a trap line, it don't take long to find a wounded animal. just like a frozen coyote in a trap. But I could tell he wasn't dead that long. Big Moses wanted to know why a 15-year-old Indian kid didn't have enough sense to get out of the cold. <coughs> what a dumb question. Back at the school, they'd be waiting to see if he'd come crawling home like a whipped dog with no place to go. In the old days, they'd have sung a dirge for him, maybe even a funeral pyre for the young warrior. All we had to do was thaw the ground so they could give him a Christian burial. In the coroner's report, they called it accidental death resulting from exposure. And that's how it ended. I guess I'm the only guy who knows how it began. Well, with the summer holidays about to begin, let's find out what some of you people are going to do this summer. Buckley? Nothing. Fish, maybe. Nothing. Typical. Fish, is that all? Going to hunt, too. None of the teachers took to him much. Fish and hunt. Thought he was a smart aleck. Yeah, I guess Joe so. used to ride him pretty hard sometimes. Are you going to do anything constructive? Huh? Yeah. What? Well, I don't know. What do you mean by constructive? <laughs> well, let's see. Lily and Michelle, how are you going to spend your summer months? With my parents. On the reserve? Yeah, got to. Are you going to hunt and 
fish like Buckley? No, I'm going to study. <laughs> what are you going to study? I'm going to learn one of the male courses. Correspondence courses? Yeah. What about? <laughs> about how to be an airline stewardess. Well, that's constructive. Leads to something. Morley? Me? Are you going to spend your summer up north, too? No, not me. Why not? Oh, nothing to do there. Everybody fights all the time. And uh, it's no good for me. Me, I'm going to Winnipeg. Spend the summer with my uh, uncle. Maybe I can get a job there. Try and save some of the money here. Gordon? Me? I want to be a bush pilot. And how are you going to do that? I'm going to watch bush pilots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Later, I'm going to get some money and go to bush pilot school. Well, Buckley, some of your classmates are going to do constructive things this summer. They all have plans for the future. Isn't there anything you want to be? Well, maybe a bush pilot. How are you going to do that? You're going to prepare for being a bush pilot by going hunting and fishing? <laughs> Maybe I'll ask Gordon. <laughs> Have a good summer. Most of those kids spend 10 months a year at the residential school. Now they were being sent back to the reserve. Hey, Buckley, did you hear about your plane? What? It ain't leaving till tomorrow. All the rest are leaving except yours. As usual, Buckley had to do things different. <laughs> to hell with the plane. <laughs> Buckley! You might wonder what an Ojibwe like me was doing up here in Cree country, caretaking a school. Well, I needed the job. Hey, kid, I see that. And those kids weren't making it any easier for me. Come on, get out of here. You want to get into trouble? My Uncle John once said, if you educate an Indian kid past 12 years old, he's not an Indian anymore. So why send him back? Buckley was a loner, always by himself, and always in a hurry, even if it took longer. I've seen it in a dog team. There's always one who's got to be different. He either becomes the leader of the pack or the outcast. With Buckley, it was too early to tell, except I didn't see any followers. Buckley's reserve was 200 miles northwest from the school. His father, Alphonse, had lived most of his life in the bush, hunting and fishing in summer, trapping in winter. But he lives in the village now, which he says he likes, but doesn't. Why don't you take a plane like other kids? They were homeless. I was in a hurry. There are a road here now? Yeah. We built one this spring. Your mother says you're such a stranger now. You're late because you don't want to come home. Ten months of the year, Buckley lived at school where a 15-year-old is still a child. Here on the reserve, his brother is not much older than himself were already on their own and would be ashamed to still be living off their father.
Every time he went home, he felt more like a stranger. Guitar was the only thing of his still left at home. But he still couldn't play the damn thing. through a dance. They had a special reason to celebrate. Prices were high on the Chicago market and everyone had just received a big check from the fish plant. At the dance, Buckley began to feel more at home. But one difficulty he would never overcome, he couldn't speak Cree. The best he could do was a kind of baby Cree, but that just made everyone laugh. She says the old man will be alone this winter, first time. She wonders why you go to school if you don't learn how to speak your own language there. You have to speak Cree to be a Cree. <laughs> he says you got lost. That's why you were so late in getting home. <laughs> an Indian getting lost? <laughs> so you must not be an Indian. He's a French. Yes, <laughs> A tourist. <laughs> Where's the old man? He asked me to go to the A meeting with him. The A meeting? You? <laughs> you must be an Indian after all. <laughs> Funny how a thing like AA has become part of our lives. Everyone goes to AA, even the ones that don't drink. My Uncle John explained it this way. In the old days, people would gather to share their troubles, settle disputes, or just swap stories of life in the bush. As the villages grew, a lot of that disappeared. AA, with its customs and rituals similar to the old tribal councils, helped put it back. But for Alphonse, there was only one true answer. Get back to the life he had always lived. Tomorrow, we make a summer camp. Sometimes a village is not a good place for me. We 
We are thankful to the seeds of life We love them Through the sun where it burns The fire of life above them And the rivers are the veins From the misty summer rains And the thunder is the voice Of a purple sky And the trees they are there for And we are one ago with my father when I was a young boy there were winter summers and they were good we are one one with the river the trees and the sky and stone we are one one with the stars and the forms in which life comes and we are afternoon we'll make a snare for bear. Sometime it's better to snare than to shoot an animal because if you only wound it, you got to find an animal, kill it. it might hurt somebody. We are one. One with the river, the trees, and the sky and stone. We are one. One with the wind and the clouds in which they ride And we are one One with the fire of the sun from which we came And we are one And we'll be free First time Buckley showed signs that he might be able to handle life in the bush. And old Alphonse began to wonder if he might yet have a trapping partner for the winter. The boy had always wanted to go trapping. And the way he kept to himself, always on his own, might be just what was needed for those long winter months on the trap line. What it says there. <laughs> All fishing can't fish here anymore. These lakes here, here, this one, this one. All polluted. This one, this one, this one, and this one. How about this one? No good. Anything along the river is closed. How long you said these lakes been polluted? I don't know. Maybe five, ten years. 
We've been eating fish out of here all this time. We're not dead yet. It's a cumulo. It accumulates in your system. I'll take my family to John Lake. Alphonse is taking his family to John Lake. Anybody else want to go along? You stay here, go back to school. Soon there will be no life at all here for an Indian. It's no good learning to be an Indian. Learn to be a white man. certain rules and regulations which we all must follow. Uh, don't be late for classes. Don't forget your homework assignments. Don't linger in the cafeteria. Don't congregate in the laboratories. Don't break smoking regulations. And don't use too much toilet paper. Don't bang your locker. Don't use too much hot water. Don't stay too long in the shower. Hey, Buckley. Don't stay up late. Don't whisper after the lights are out. And don't forget to say your prayers. Hey, don't you ever fall asleep in class again. <laughs> <laughs> well, class, you're... Uh... Assignment today will be to write about something good. Some uh, nice thing or event that you can remember when you lived on the reserve. All right, you'll have 30 minutes. School days, school days, dear old residential rule days. I recall the stuffy old classroom, smoking butts in the grade school bathroom. When I was a boy at the age of six, you took me out. Five years he's been at large Dear old teacher read the charge Principal looked down at me Said, boy, you've been bucking democracy Well, you get one year for climbing trees You get another one for catching bees Here's two more for curiosity You get another one for spontaneity Here's two more for exuberance You get another one for innocence Here's one year for creativity, and you could serve them all consecutively. Go on to uh, lesson 14 in your math workbooks while I correct the essays. Buckley? Buckley, will you come here a minute, please? But you've written only one sentence here. Now, I stress that a theme consists of several well-developed paragraphs, not just one sentence. Well, let's take a look at what you've written. There were winters and summers, and they were good. Well, there's nothing technically wrong with it, but, uh, well, it's a bit clumsy. It would be more precise and terse to write, there were good winters and summers, or perhaps, both winters and summers were good. Yeah, the girls are out to bingo and the boys are getting stinko. We think no more of bingo. Most Saturday nights, I got in my truck and headed to town. Have a few beers, make a night of it. A lot of the kids did the same. Sometimes it raised hell, get into trouble. But that didn't bother me. I went my way and they went theirs. Radio for a couple of beers. Nobody's going to trade a couple of beers for that radio. I'll get some beer. You watch.
around, kid. Hey, I know you. I thought I could put you in jail. My radio! Trade you for a couple of beers. <laughs> Stupid kid. together. Then we'll drive around town and check on my trap line. Maybe we can find a few girls. Well, that was the night I first got to know Buckley. After that, we saw quite a bit of each other. If a guy wants to live one kind of life, but is forced to live some other way, well, then he's a slave. Can I give my headdress? Whenever he wanted to talk, he'd come and see me. We used to talk about a lot of things. But somehow, we always wound up talking about what it meant to be an Indian. Were there any Indian slaves? Hell no. Not that I know of. Just too many mean Indians, I guess. You should meet my Uncle John. He helped me build my costume. Everything I know, I learned from him. God, he's a mean Indian. But he knows a lot, too. Has he done lots of school? Hell no. Old Indians who never went to school know more than you and me will ever know. They never forget anything. My Uncle John, he's old. He's seen a lot of things, and he heard a lot of stories. And he remembers, too. Here's something else I heard my Uncle John say. He said, a white man, he plows up all the ground, pulls up all the trees, kills everything. <laughs> Blasts all the rocks, spread them all around. Gee, no wonder the spirit of the earth doesn't like him. You know the city? Yeah, I've been there for a couple of years. Wow. How come you came back here? City, a nice place to visit, but to live there? That's another stupid city joke. Everybody that lives in a city always says that about some other city. City's no good, eh? No, I didn't say that. I had a great time there. It's just... That's a bad place for Indians, that's all. Bad place or not, Buckley kept after me to show him the city. Hell, I thought he just wanted to have a good time. Come on, kid, let's go! Now I know different. All his life, the kid expected that one day he'd return to the reserve. Now, like his teacher said, he'd have to do something constructive. How far is it to the city? Oh, maybe a thousand miles or so. We have time? Hell, we got till day after tomorrow. Yee When the truck broke down, I decided to show the kid how to travel the old Indian way. So he jumped the Wahoo Express. It was going to 
be a long ride. So I thought I'd tell the Cree a few Ojibwe legends. A long time ago, a famous hunter was going home with some birds when he saw a beautifully colored little snake. He thought it looked friendly and might be hungry, so he threw it one of his birds. A few weeks later, he saw the snake again. It had grown bigger, but still seemed friendly, so he threw it a rabbit. The next time the hunter passed, the snake was even bigger and looked so hungry that the hunter felt sorry for him and gave him a deer. That night, all the Indians of the tribe were dancing and singing when the snake came. It was now so big and long that it stretched all around the people and looked very hungry. The people were afraid and tried to shoot it. That snake was hurt, but he thrashed around and killed a lot of people. Goddamn snake. <laughs> No, no, don't say it that way. No, an old Indian like Uncle John would say, that snake's even bigger now. Maybe not so pretty, but still awful hungry. show my friend the city. That's good, because there aren't even any bad jobs left around. Come on, sit down. I'm going to put a sweater or something on. Yeah. Going out drinking? Yeah. Yeah, I thought maybe you could find a place to, um, where we can take him with us. Mm. Maybe. You two bucks had your fun. I can go home. Home? This is home. Yeah? Well, according to what's in here, you're a long way from home. According to your face, you're on the wrong side of the ocean. Yeah. Hey! Johnny! Look! Don't get smart with me, Chief. Or I'll lock you up again. Both of you. Understand? Now go home. Tell me to go home, my own country. 
Well, what are you going to do now? Go home. When I got back, I found Buckley had become part of some new experiment which would take him away from the Indian school completely. Well, class, as you already know, some of your more advanced fellow students are being integrated into the town school. It's a new program and, uh, well, I'd like to wish them the very best of luck. Okay, class dismissed. And, uh, Buckley, don't fall asleep in your new class. <laughs> And we always wanted to have a son, too. Last month, I met Mr. Robinson, the Indian Affairs officer. When he came in the showroom for his new car, well, he knew we had an empty room. So he asked us if uh, we would mind taking part in the uh, Indian student boarding program. <laughs> oh, hey, Buckley, I want to show you this. My new shotgun. This fall, we're going hunting, you and me. I shot a moose this summer. Oh, how many points? Points? Uh, Antler points. Oh, and a bear, too. <laughs> we want you to feel like this is your home, pal. Anything you want, you ask for. Uh, Buckley, would you care for a beer? Sure. The plan was to have them move in with families in town and attend public schools. They gave Buckley to a guy called Gothier, whose daughter Melanie had got into some kind of trouble and had gone to Winnipeg. So they had a spare room. Oh, look at that, Buckley. That's really a nice gun. Light, easy to load. No kick at all. And I, I do my own shells. I'll show you how. You see, you can save a lot of money when you make your own shells. Everyone hoped that it would work out, but the whole thing got off to a bad start. One of the kids got sent back the first week because he was making out with a local talent. And Buckley screwed up without even trying. Sport. Indians don't have loaded guns around the house. Gautier told him not to feel bad because it was just a mistake and I would forget it ever happened. When he told me about it, I couldn't stop laughing. And at school, he became known as that crazy kid who shot Mrs. Gautier's dishes off the wall. This lesson concerns itself with important dates in our history. In 1492, Susan? Columbus discovered America. In 1743, Harriet? The Rocky Mountains are discovered. In 1869, Gary? The First Real Rebellion is defeated. In 1885, Joanne? Donald Smith drives the last bike in a transcontinental railroad. With the coming of summer, Buckley returned to the reserve. Goat here was going north for his annual vacation. Let's us profit a bit. Come, les coureurs des bois! Dragging along Melanie, who had come home for the summer. Last year, his father was upset because Buckley trekked in alone. He was in for an even greater surprise this year. Hey! This your father? He looks like a fisherman. He is. You must know these lakes pretty well. I'm up here to do a little fishing, so... What'd you say? Yes, 
They stayed a week. Each morning, Alphonse would take Gautier to some new fishing spot, leave him for the day, and return in the evening to help clean fish, have a drink, and talk. Do you smoke? Yes. Uh, no, um... Melanie? What? Where are you going? For a walk. There's no time. I need your help. Come on. More than ever, Buckley took to going off by himself, lost in his own thoughts. On the reserve, they referred to him as an apple. Red on the outside, white on the inside. He was beginning to realize what it meant to be born Indian, an educated white. In the old days, every young Indian reaching manhood would journey alone into the wilderness, fasting for several days, seeking his vision. Later, he would seek the counsel of wise men to help him understand his vision. Here's another example of iambic tetrameter. Behold her single in the field, yon solitary highland lass, reaping and singing by herself. Stop here or gently pass. The northern lights are bright tonight. Now, I wonder what's wrong with me these days. So what you're talking? Stop it. I had no way of knowing what was going on inside his head. To me, he was just acting strange. It was getting on my nerves. How's that family you're staying with? They're nice and good and kind and strange. Stop it. Buckley, the integration experiment was working in reverse. The more he saw the other world, the more he wanted to be an Indian. If I could meet your Uncle John, I bet I'll stop this stupid talk. All right, all right, I'll, I'll take you to the Apollo this weekend, I promise. If you promise to stop talking like that. Oh, there you are. Is this the young friend you were talking about? Yes. Why doesn't he dance? I don't have a costume. <laughs> Come with me. We'll see what we can find. Mm -hmm. Spirit is healthy, the dance is holy.
threw himself into it, but I don't know that he got much out of it. Mainly, I'd hoped that Buckley would learn a thing or two from my Uncle John. Thought you were gonna sleep all day the way you danced last night. It was good. I'm gonna miss you this winter. I'm not going back to that job. I got a chance to go trapping this winter. I'll come with you and help you out. You don't know anything about trapping. You teach me. Too old. No, not a chance. Oh, there you are. You still want to talk? Yes. If you quit school now, what are you going to do? Go and help my father. No. I won't go back to the reserve. I'll take a job. a job so bad no white man will take it. I don't care about the job. I'm an Indian. I want to learn the Indian way. Buckley, there is no true Indian way for you. An Indian must be taught from the first year. Inside the stomach, Kawadi killed the shark. And he came back a new Indian. I should become like a white man? 
I don't know what an Indian should be. I don't know the answer. I only know many Indians have died, and many more will die before the land gets friendly again. He doesn't know the answer. Buckley, get in. We're going by your way. I'll see you before I go trapping. Yet? No. Mm. But he must be home. There's only one beer left. Mm. Mm. Look, just when you're figuring here, you know, at this rate, it'll cost us $102 a month to have Buckley here. Well, yet, mm. well, we get only $100 a month from uh, Indian Affairs for his keep. <laughs> at the rate, it costs us, if we had five kids like Buckley, they go broke. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> one by one, the kids drifted back to the residential school. The great experiment wasn't working out. At least not here. Old Melanie Gothier, the daughter of Mr. Right, and Mrs. Right. Ralph Gothier of Plains House. The girl was living with her aunt in Winnipeg, where she had until recently been attending school. Now we turn to news on the bright side. The trapping season promises to yield good returns for those men who each winter choose to endure the rigor of sub-zero weather and waist-deep snow. What's the matter? Reports from the trap lines have been good. The weather in a moment. I knew that girl. I used to live with her parents. That winter, I went trapping like I planned. My cousin got laid up and couldn't work his line, so he gave me his traps, cabin, team, supplies, all for a share of the take. for a while so I was a bit rusty at first but it wasn't long before I got the hang of it again
guess if there's one thing I really like, it's trapping. I don't make that much money at it, but it sure is better than some of those dumb jobs I do down south. I guess that's the difference between me and a kid like Buckley. He's got nothing he can go back to. Yeah, okay. Try out the skiddle, mister? No. Can we just look at it? No. That's all right. All right, then try it out, but be careful. Take it easy. Indians. If all of them got together, they couldn't even raise the money for one of those. Let me try the skiddle. Let me try the skiddle. You know, the next thing they're going to want to do is come in and drink this free coffee. And that's not all. You know what else? In our schools, for example. They want us, they want us to teach Indian language and Indian, Indian history and Indian culture. The more we give them, the more they want. Before you know it, we're going to be working for them. Maybe it's a good thing. I don't know, I mean, uh, the thing about Indian culture. Let's go see what they're doing. Hey, yeah. expect to see you this winter. I thought I'd do some trapping with you. Bring any gear? Any snowshoes? I brought you a skidoo. <laughs> it's great to see you. Come on in, I got some tea. I should have sent him back. But hell, I was the last guy in the world to tell him what he had to do. Yeah, I need a skidoo, but not a stolen. You could tell him he didn't know it was borrowed. That I didn't know it was stolen? I think if you wanted to bring something, you should have bought some booze. We'll have to steal that. You're in trouble, kid. Hey, kid! Come on, let's go!
<laughs> Who's your tailor? The seasons in a circle sing their circle songs of life And the spinning cycle circles round the season As the spring returns to spring and the winter passes on And the loving and the living is a spark and then it's gone And we give thanks Thanks to all the children of the earth And we give thanks On her breath, cause we are one, one with every creature, stone and flower, and we are one. they do? They take you away from your parents when you're a kid? You can't even understand your own language? I guess soon there'll be no Indians and maybe no Indian problem. Did you shoot a moose? No, a wolf. He won't go far. Good. Better take the skidoo. Was that a big wolf? I didn't kill him. I was afraid to get lost. What do you mean, afraid to get lost? You just can't leave a wounded wolf running around? Go get my rifle. Ah, you'll never make a trapper. You better go back to school.
And get those furs ready. We're leaving first thing in the morning. Furs add up to a total value of three hundred and eighty-seven dollars. That's not right. You want to see my figures? They're worth more than that. The worth is determined by the price down south. You know that. But well, we just saw a guy on the way in, and he said prices was real good. You don't try and cheat me. I'm not trying to cheat you. Prices were good yesterday. If these were seal skins, you'd get even less than that now. But they can't drop that much in one day. Well, they did. Came in on the wire this morning, and you know there's nothing I can do about that. It's all done down south. Well, I'll just wait a couple of days till prices get better. Prices will keep going down, looks like. People are just not buying furs now. All right. Give me what you owe me. Well, with all the credit we've advanced you. You owe us $13.53. Now, you Indians are always talking about ecology, so what are you complaining about? Hey? I'll show you some goddamn ecology. Now wait. Johnny! Hey! I'm not going back there. Just stopping by, fella. Just stopping by. We were in real trouble. They had nothing on me, but for the kid, there was the whole business of the skidoo. I felt guilty as hell because I knew I should have done something when he showed up with that damn machine. I'm going to need your signature, Father. Come on, let's go. Hey, my guitar. Where am I going? Reform school. I'm not running away anymore. I'm not going to borrow anything anymore. No, I made up my mind. I don't need to go to reform school. Now's your chance, kid. temperature fell to 40 below and like big Moses said he didn't have enough sense to get out of the cold
At the inquest, they said it was an accident. I don't know. But I do know this. A trapped animal has two choices. Chew off its leg or curl up and die. Thank you. 